How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have a special guest with us, and she can say her name, what she does, and all of that jazz. Awesome. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Maggie Schneider, and I'm a singer, songwriter, a performer of all things uh, based out of Atlanta. There we go. Well, I want to apologize for anybody watching this. If my if you hear like a loud noise, it's because my window is creaking. So just as a forewarning. Um, but the first question would be Maggie, because I've had I've had solo artists on before. Um, but I'm curious about your journey. Like, how did you start out? Like, how did you get into this type of music? And like, you know, where we're at now, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So I've always known that I've wanted to do music. Um, ever since a l I was a little girl, I would sing Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield, <laughs> like for my parents with my little Barbie karaoke machine. Um, and so from there, I was in musical theater and was in a lot of bands as a kid. And then starting around 15 or 16, started opening for bands. Um, I opened for Allison Weiss, Encourage My Love, and some really cool cool like warp tour emo pop punk acts um, and now I'm at the point where I have music of my own out everywhere um, I played the final Atlanta date of the Vans Warp tour which was a really cool surreal moment um, and yeah so I'm just having a great time just continuing to write music and play with my band so yeah it's been really fun that's awesome. And like the one thing that I noticed about like your band in particular, because I am slightly familiar with your stuff, was that I was like, oh, she has like a band. It's not just like her when you were like, oh, I'm doing this solo thing. So uh, I guess what was the thought behind that of like, well, I want to do this and have like a band with me as opposed to maybe like doing the typical singer songwriter, like I have my acoustic guitar, or I like have a piano, right. some some of that route. Like, did you did you consider like making it a band that wasn't your name, but like a band collectively? Or were you just like, I know this has to be me and I'm just gonna find people that wanna play with me live? Yeah, so for me, I started with just like an acoustic guitar or with a keyboard. So um, I played in a lot of like band camps and like rock band programs sure. at first, but you know, it's hard to find people that really fit your creative vision and where you see yourself and also like just the personalities and so I was in a lot of projects and made a lot of friends from them but um, it wasn't necessarily maybe one person's creative vision or vice versa um, so then I started doing the singer-songwriter more like acoustic guitar type of thing um, which was really fun but I was always kind of longing to have people on stage with me that you know are great musicians but also really great friends and so it kind of it happened by accident. Um, I've known these guys that have been in my band for, you know, four to six years now, okay. all individually. Um, and I met them when they were in different bands, too. Um, and so kind of this year, we formed the lineup and we've toured together now. And it just feels like a family. And it's so nice to be supported on stage, but also be backed up and work with my best friends. So. <laughs> no, I, I definitely see that. And I like I said, I've seen some of the, like, the behind the scenes videos and stuff like that. And it's really cool to see like the camaraderie, like and just like the kind of fun atmosphere that you guys bring about. Like I feel like you guys joke with each other. It's not like, OK, like I'm the lead singer. This is my project. Like I'm going to be like top dog and like, you know, tell everybody like this is what you got to do. It does feel like a collective unit. And I appreciate yeah. that a lot. Yeah, it does. And like, that's always what I've wanted. Um, I'm happiest when I'm collaborating with people and working with people. And I'm also happiest when I'm not on stage alone. And so having that ability to be best friends with the people you're in a band with and, and get to pull pranks on each other and have a good time, like it's, it's the best of both worlds. That's awesome. Well, the next question is obviously you're based out of Atlanta and you know, for this foreseeable future, it doesn't seem like we're going to any shows, but what are some favorite venues in Atlanta that you guys have either played at or venues that you like going to when you get the chance to see shows? Yeah, for sure. So the Masquerade in Atlanta is definitely my favorite venue. Um, they are truly my family. Um, I played there for the first time when I was 12. Oh, wow, <laughs> it, okay. Yeah, and it, what's cool is they had a historic venue at 695 North Avenue in Atlanta 
where bands like Nirvana played. Like, it was a huge deal, and it was kind of run out of an old mill. And so awesome. I had the opportunity. Yeah, it was. It was really cool and really special. So I had the chance to play all three stages of that space, and then they moved to another space um, in East Atlanta, um, about like three or four years ago, and it's just as amazing. And, and all of the people working there worked at the original location, and oh, cool. um, the new faces are fantastic too. So it's very much a community and just a family or fam familial atmosphere. And so that's definitely our favorite venue to play um, just because we're surrounded by friends. Sure. Um, and then also the Tabernacle is a really, really great venue here. Um, super pretty. It's like a 3,000 cap room. And I saw I saw the Jonas Brothers there when oh, they wow, like okay. Yeah, they were holding like a free surprise concert. Um, and I like won tickets. I called the radio stations over and over and over. I was like, I need to get into this. Um, but yeah, that's a really cool venue too. Awesome. Awesome. And the next question would be Maggie kind of, you may have already answered it already, but what was the last show you attended that you didn't play? Uh, yeah. So for both, um, the last show I attended and I opened for was for sleep on it. Um, and I love those guys. It was oh a gosh. great show. It was fun. Yeah, they are the best. They're so great, and I'm so fortunate to call them friends of mine. So, um, but yeah, it was sleep on it between you and me, bearings never kept, and then my band opened, and it was so fun because it's always a cool thing to open for friends, but to also open for bands that you love. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely, I feel like because uh, I I went to that show here in Philadelphia. Like I don't I don't live in Philly. I live in New Jersey, but Philadelphia is the closest venue or closest city to me. And so yeah. I did an interview with Sleep On It. So if you want to check that out, you know, slight plug, you can, do it. You can check that out. Um, but. Uh, but it's really cool. I think they have like exploded in popularity, which is totally warranted. I I've, I found out about them yeah. like a while ago, and just to see them grow as a band is really cool. Um, and that must yeah. have been an awesome experience as well to you know play on stage with them, but also like enjoy the show too because it's a great. It was a great lineup. Yeah, it was. And like I said, like they have been so supportive of me. We we started a friendship online. Um, because I covered fireworks, yes. right, kind of when it came out. And so they, like, started sharing my covers and being super supportive of my own music. Um, and I've also had the opportunity to collaborate with Zach, who's the lead vocalist, um, on a song of mine, which I'm super excited about. Um, so they're just great. It was it was just so surreal because I'm like, wow, I get to share the stage with friends and one of my favorite bands. <laughs> There we go. Well, the seminary question, Maggie, who are you influenced by? Who do you draw from? Like, who did you draw from early on, like early stages that are like pillar bands? And then who are you who inv influences you more currently now? Yeah, so I am influenced by a lot of things. Um, when I was kind of starting out and kind of inspired to write my own songs and play guitar, obviously like Demi Lovato in her rock era, I loved that stuff. Um, and the Jonas Brothers were another big influence of mine growing up. Um, going into pop punk and emo, the first two bands that really inspired me were My Chemical Romance. Um, and that was truly the band that brought me into the scene of music. Um, I remember when I was 12, my cover band played Famous Last Words. <laughs> Ooh, classic. Yeah, exactly. So I fell in love with them and then All Time Low. Um, and All Time Low is definitely, I, I would say my favorite band and Alex Gaskarth is probably my favorite songwriter ever. Um, so those are kind of like the holy trinity <laughs> of, of bands that inspired me. Um, but I'm also, I'm influenced by musical theater because I started out in that. Um, I love like contemporary musicals like Dear Evan Hansen and, and Spring Awakening and a bunch of those like rock pop type of shows. Um, and even now, like I love everything. I love everything from Julia Michaels. Um, who does some really cool like indie pop stuff to Love, who's really great, um, to even like the Menzingers and 
things like that. So I love I love everything, and I love taking inspiration from a, a bunch of different places. Yeah, like I we were talking about off camera. Like I have found out about a lot of your music through some of the covers that you've done, and so it's really cool to see, you know, like to you know ask you this sort of question and. Because usually I have like a basic knowledge of like who I interview and stuff. And then I kind of like as a game, I like try to figure out I'm like who she influenced by or like who are they influenced by. And I want to see if I'm like remotely close. So I did feel I feel like most people that are in the like 20 ish range age range, like everybody's got to say my chem. I feel like that's like a staple for oh, yeah. any 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 person growing up in that time frame. Uh, so I'm glad you mentioned them. And then. All time low is great. I still feel like they put out like fantastic music. So I did Thank feel like you. You, I do. I do feel like you draw a lot of influences from them. And so I, I was like in my head, I was like, glad I got it right. <laughs> yeah, like both of those bands, I just like I'm so moved by the songwriting. Um, like with My Chemical Romance, I think my two favorite songs of theirs are I Don't Love You and Disenchanted. Um, I just think he and Alex Gaskar, they both have such a way with words, like they're both poets, yeah. and they write music that's so emotional too, and, and so I just, I love, I love emo and pop punk for that reason. There we go. Well, moving along, Maggie, kind of keeping it uh, to the influences, but more currently, um, who have you been jamming recently? What's on the Spotify? What have you been listening to lately? Oh man, okay, so I've, I've been listening to a lot of poppy stuff recently. Um, I love Lob. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Lob. It's either Lob or Lau. It's close. I it's love one Lau. of the two. Yeah. <laughs> it's either one. Um, but he's fantastic. Um, I love his vibe. Um, I've been listening to Wake Up Sunshine, the new all-time low album, nonstop. Um, I love the band Camino. Um, yeah, like that. that is another go-to for me. Uh, I feel like every song they put out is just brilliant. Um, what else? What else? Wake Up Sunshine has been, has been the biggie. Um, yeah, yeah, honestly. Like, that, that entire record, I listened to it when it came out at midnight, including the Van Camino feature because they have a song with them, and I was like, this is the perfect collaboration. <laughs> I've I found out about them recently. Like I had shouts to my one friend Nathan. He's been recommending mm -hmm. me more like pop artists because a lot of the bands I have on here are a little bit heavier, um, yeah. and I kind of span the gambit of different genres. But I was like, I've never really fully delved into like pop music. And he was like, Well, this band I feel like you'll like because they're not like fully pop, but they're like they do have pop elements. So I was yeah. like shoot him over tell me which song i should listen to and he's like don't l just listen to one song just listen to the ep try hard and you'll be yeah. hooked so i listened to it and i was just like oh my god i was like i'm an yeah. idiot why did i not find out about this band earlier like they're fantastic yeah, yeah. like that band exploded within yes. the past couple of years because i remember they were independent when i saw them live which was like January 2018 oh, wow. and they sold out an entire tour of like 600 cap rooms and it was a long tour <laughs> and it was like one of their first runs and so seeing them perform and also be an independent band at the time it was super inspiring yeah and they just put out like pop hits i i've like i've literally had that on repeat for like the past couple weeks like a lot yeah. of the stuff that i've been reviewing and i just can't i can't take it out of the rotation it's just that good so i i, I love yeah, it it's so good. it never gets old <laughs> um but the next question maggie uh a fun one if you could pick a song to cover because i know you do a lot of covers but if there was a new one to add into the into the list what would it be Dang. oh that's a good, good question um man probably probably be from wake up sunshine because i've only done like the singles um i would probably say i love glitter and crimson oh that's a good i one. love that one i love that one also probably clumsy i think clumsy is a great song on the record too oh those are both great choices i feel like you would I feel like you would nail it on either one of them. Um, but I also feel like, you know, I might be a little bit biased, but, and we've been talking about them a lot, but I feel like a band Camino track, I feel like would be fantastic. So. 
Yeah, Know Me is my favorite Van Camino song. That, that's a great one. So, so maybe maybe future yeah. future tense. We'll we'll have to we'll oh, for have sure. do that. But if you have any uh, suggestions uh, for Maggie, drop them in the comments. I'm sure she'll give them a mm -hmm. listen. Um, but I do have a question cool. about like the covers and stuff, like when you're posting them and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Like how how do you like go about like figuring out the covers is it something that you're like you'll figure it out by mm -hmm. ear and then just kind of like create a melody because i don't feel like you know you keep to this song but like melody wise it's a it's different and i i think that was really what intrigued me to not only ask you to do this interview but also like to have mm -hmm. just to check out the music in general was because i feel like the melodies and some of the stuff that you changed arrangement wise was really interesting to me mm -hmm. and i was like this is good. Like this, I don't know how she like flipped it just like the slightest way, but it just was great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so I, I learned how to play piano just on my own by ear. Um, I cannot read sheet music. I know some theory like chord progressions and those types of patterns, but if you give me a piece of sheet music, it will take me a while to like actually read it. Um, but I can pick up on a song just by listening to it. So for me, I always first, like, I'll pick a song that's inspiring me at the moment. Um, you know, it can be a new song. They're usually new songs because I really try to stay updated on um, new music and, and different bands that I've seen live. Mm -hmm. um, but even if it's an older song, like I did um, Coffees for Closers by Fall Out Boy recently. That's my favorite Fall Out Boy song ever. Um, I'll just sit down and think, okay, so how do I make this song my own? Yeah. Um, because some of the covers that I love and that I really appreciate are when artists make them their own. Um, so I will, I will stay true to, you know, like the chord progressions and things like that, but I'm also like a theater kid, like I said, so I love changing vocal melodies, like I love harmonies, I love, you know, just kind of experimenting with how it would sound if, it was a piano ballad instead of a more upbeat song or vice versa. Um, so I always try and um, just take it on a song by song basis. Um, but to kind of keep it interesting, I always try and experiment with it. Yeah, because I feel like you, there's been some songs that you've done like acoustic guitar wise. And I'm like, that's really cool. And then I'll see some where you're like behind the piano and still singing. And I'm like, that's really cool. So it's cool to see like the, the arrangement changes and stuff like that. I am not like particularly extremely efficient in music, but I do play guitar. So like when I see some of the arrangements and stuff, I'm like, that's cool. Like it still has that like main melody to it, but it isn't like just like a copy paste kind of like cover. It feels very, you know, like you said, you make it your own. And I really feel like that's one of the standout things, you know, not trying to just like, go crazy to plug your stuff but i do oh. feel like it is it is something that intrigued me initially and i feel like it would intrigue a lot of people that watch this to maybe thank go you. check out your covers and stuff for future tense so yeah thank you yeah and they're fun like i i don't want to put something out that is redundant because the artist has already created this really great piece of original work mm -hmm. so my goal is to always kind of spin it a little bit, make it my own, but still pay homage to what they were trying to go for. Certainly, certainly. Well, the next question, Maggie, another fun one. Favorite yeah. food to eat. What's what's the go-to? Oh, well, man, that's hard. Like, sweet or salty or what? <laughs> I feel like, okay, well, you really are putting me in a hole because typically don't people don't, you know, aren't asking those <laughs> sorts of questions, but I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, the dedication to it, at least. Uh, yeah. Why don't we do one sweet and one savory? Okay, so I've been snacking a lot during quarantine. <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as like sweet snacks go, it's kind of a weird one, but I love chocolate covered raisins. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I know. Like people either love them or they look at me like I'm crazy. Um, but that's always been like my favorite sweet snack. Um, and then salty wise, I love I love pizza rolls. Um, I love mozzarella sticks. So I, I guess between those, like snack wise, I love all of those things. I've been going back and forth. <laughs> Ooh, so like a Totino's pizza roll kind of thing. Yeah, I I feel that. <laughs> I might oh, yeah. you might you might have inspired me to go take a trek out into the the uh, rain pouring rain to go get some Totino's. 
<laughs> yes, they're so good. Like, I also, I have dipping sauces at my house, so, like, I'll dip them in, like, spicy sauces, and, like, it makes it, it makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'll have to, that's a pro tip. I'm going to have to remember that yeah. one. But uh, <laughs> next question, Maggie, getting back to the music stuff, if you were to pick somebody to collaborate with, whether it be a guest feature on your next record or a producer you'd like to work with in the future, who would it be? Alex Gaskard. Absolutely. Um, that's always been, like, a dream for me um, just because again like he's such a great songwriter um, and has just such such a way with words and I love his references too. like he references a lot of literature um, he references just really great metaphors and imagery and all this stuff so he would definitely be a songwriting collaboration mm -hmm. um, I I I can't announce this right now, but I have someone on a song that was like a bucket list uh, thing for me that's actually happening, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and once that comes out, you will know. Um, <laughs> but but when I when I heard the track, I like had goosebumps. I'm like, wow, like I can't believe that this all worked out. So. <laughs> That is uh, that is the biggest curve I've ever heard in my entire life, but it's okay though. It, you know, I feel like you're you're you know getting people ready for the next. People will know. People will know soon enough. <laughs> I, like, quarantine has like allowed my band and I to prep a lot of new stuff, um, and so I I want to share it so badly, <laughs> um, but I can't right now. But it'll be worth. I mean, I could tell you that it's coming out in June. If that, if that, uh, if that, you know, maybe opens the door a little bit. I don't know. That I feel like yeah. you're gonna keep it lock and key. So I, I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna force the issue. Like I'm well, sure uh, people will find I out. Will, yeah, I will say it'll probably be out around then. Okay. Well, there we go. Right. Well, you guys have a little surprise to check out when when this uh, video goes live, but. Um, I do feel, do, does Alex know, like, have you obviously, I assume have met Alex at this point, you know, I does have. he know you like want to collaborate and like do stuff like musically? Yeah. So I never like audibly told him, <laughs> <laughs> um, what well, was this is your chance to audibly tell him. Yes. Alex, if you're watching, it would be a dream of mine to write a song with you. Um, and what's funny is I, I worked on a couple of EPs with Ryan Dawson, uh, oh, the nice. drummer of Time Low. Um, and so that was a super surreal experience to get to work with him. And um, he had a studio in Nashville and, and has produced a bunch of bands there. So it was really cool to, to go up there and do that. Um, but I remember I met Alex in more of a um, – kind of professional setting I would guess like I was at one of the shows and I was hanging out with Ryan and um, got to say hi to Alex in you know a setting that wasn't a meet and greet um, and he was like yeah Ryan has showed me your stuff like I'm, I'll be sure to listen to it again and that for me was just so rewarding I was like wow my favorite songwriter so Alex if you're watching this let's make it happen <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it up, Alex. You know, everybody that's watching this, if you're a fan of Maggie, if you're a fan of All Time Low, make sure to go tweet at them because I feel like yeah. uh, we, we can make this happen. You know, I'm trying to make the quarantine dreams happen here while, yeah. you know, while we're all here. I feel you're, you know, he wouldn't, I don't feel like he would have a good excuse to be saying no. I mean, like, what are you going to do? He's not touring now, so... I I know. I mean, he, what I love, his Instagram story right now, I think he and his wife are living on a farm or a ranch now, and he has, like, multiple goats <laughs> that they have as pets now, and I'm like, Alex, we can, like, hang out with the goats, we can, we can hang out and write a song together at the same time, it could work. There we go. Well, I feel like you, I, I feel like Alex, which you, I know you will watch, inevitably, yeah. um, you got to now you just got to I, I feel like it's is it, all of the stars have aligned to the point where this needs to this needs to happen so <laughs> there we go the next question maggie uh since you do play guitar you play piano and you also sing but if there's another musical instrument you could master what would it be i would love to play drums <laughs> um i'm horrible at them so am i uh, yeah like i can never get the hand foot coordination 
Um, and I would always try, like, I had the Green Day version of Rock Band, and I would constantly try to play, like, Jesus of Suburbia, yeah. and I would fail every time. And, like, I tell my friends who are drummers, and including my drummer, Jeremy, I'm like, I'm so sad I can't do this. Um, but, yeah, I, I would love to learn how to play drums. I feel like most guitar players, like, or people that know how to play guitar, they're all like, I want to learn how to play drums. But it yeah. just comes down to the hand-feet coordination. So I feel like, again, my streak has continued. I feel like I haven't had one guitar player that has not said that they want to play drums. I feel like that's like a constant in life. If there's nothing you oh, yeah. don't know, that is the constant. Um, <laughs> so glad to add you to the list, Maggie, of the ever-growing <laughs> guitar drum people. Uh, yeah. It's sad. It's like I just I, – I end up sounding like um, – I think his name's Dale from Stub Brothers. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> It's like I end up sounding like him every time I try. I just can't. I just, I like, I like try it at like a guitar center and then I'm just like, wow, I sound like an idiot. And then I just get off the drum set and I just walk away like, you know, and as right. if I never did it. So, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but the next question, Maggie, my personal favorite question, because I'm a nerd and I love asking it, if you could be a video game character, who would you be? Ooh, that's a good question. So I've I've recently gotten into video games. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. Perfect question then. Yeah, my mom and I got switches so we could play together. <laughs> that is very adorable. That is adorable. Yeah, <laughs> she's like a pop punk mom. She's super cool. So we get along. <laughs> Quarantine has been nice and not stressful. Uh, but so I've been, okay. I've been playing Animal Crossing. That's I've, been a big thing. Um, but there's also, and I haven't played this game, I know they have a My Hero Academia video game. So, knowing that show, I am definitely Ochako. Um, that is me to a T. So, I guess I would say Ochako would be my video game character. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a move. I like that. Definitely. I, I was like, I was like, what is she going to answer? Because she's like, she's a new... She's a new person to video games. What type of answer am I going to get from Maggie? So I yeah. I approve. That was a great answer. Um, also, any Animal Crossing character would have been tight as well. I don't have it yet. I know mm -hmm. I'm on the boat, but I feel like everybody is now going to spam me and be like, get Animal Crossing because yeah. you're missing out. Yeah, it's so fun, and it's, it's very relaxing. Like, there isn't a lot of, like, conflict in the game. Like, the <laughs> conflict is that I am in deep debt right now with Tom Nook. Yes. Um, but I mean, everyone is. It's like so. real life. It's like real life finances. You know, that's how yeah. I feel when I look at my bank account. <laughs> exactly. It's so sad. And it's like, you want to build a bridge? Well, that's a hundred thousand bells for you. And I'm like, Tom, this is expensive. Like I need the villagers to help out with some of this. <laughs> You're like, where's my stimulus check? I need that, you know, to that's build the insane. bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> missed opportunity missed opportunity but uh next question maggie getting back to the music stuff uh if you were to compile a dream tour lineup who would be on it obviously if you would like you can include yourself if not then that is also a perfectly <laughs> fine answer but you know i feel like you should yeah well i have i have another specific question so how many bands are on the bill Ooh, okay. Am I feeling generous today? That is the real question. Uh, right. We'll do we'll do we'll do a stat since you know, since we're in the quarantine mode, I feel mm -hmm. like to just you know, set off non quarantine with a banger, I'm gonna give you five bands to have on. It's just gonna be okay. one large tour. Yeah, sweet. All right, so definitely my band. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we gotta build it. Um I would say All Time Low, definitely. My Chemical Romance, definitely. Um, the band Camino. Ooh, okay, I'm feeling this already. It, it's different. Like, this is a tour that, like, wouldn't necessarily happen in a million years. But, like, you it... You know that. Well, true. Especially... <laughs> um, and then, gosh. I mean... I I love sleep on it to be honest. Ooh, then it would be right. a party. then it would be a party every night and 
um, Zach and I would sing songs from Rent, so it would work. <laughs> oh man, I feel like Zach's gonna watch this, and it's gonna be great. I'm gonna Zach, if you're watching this, please comment below and tell me if that is a true that it is going to happen, or b true that it's going to happen because I just believe it to be in my oh. heart. You know? Yeah. It, it will definitely happen. He is as much into theater as I am, like rock stuff. Um, and so we have, we have nerded out about that together. <laughs> there you go. Well, I don't know if he wanted that on the internet, but now it is on. <laughs> now <it's not. laughs> um, next question, the follow-up, obviously the dr fantastic Dream Tour lineup. In your opinion, who puts on a great live performance? Uh, all right. I'm going to give a different answer from the usual ones I've given. Um, <laughs> I love seeing Lady Gaga. Interesting. Okay. I how, love how, rec how recently was it, if you don't mind me asking? So it was her last tour. So it was her Joanne tour for that record. Um, and that so that was like 20, like late 2017, early 2018. Um, but so I recently. Yeah. So like I, I had always wanted to see her um, like as a little girl, too. And like I begged my mom. I was like, take me to see Lady Gaga. And my mom was like, you can go when you're older because I was like 12. <laughs> so sure. I, I understand. Um, but so I waited all day. She had a pit. So you would you bought like pit tickets and then you had to wait all day to actually get a good spot because it was in an arena. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and so I made it to the front. I don't know how that happened, um, but hearing her perform, and especially I love hearing her play piano and sing. Um, she's definitely a huge reason why I continue to play piano because um, I, I just love her style and her voice is amazing. Um, so Lady Gaga is definitely one. And then Green Day. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw Green Day. Um, I think I think that year too, um, and I had always wanted to see them. They maybe come to the South like once every ten years. <laughs> like it's never, and like I really hope the the Hella Mega Tour doesn't get canceled. So my fingers are crossed for that. Um, but I saw them, and they played for almost three hours. That is awesome. They play yeah. probably like the span of their discography. Like they have a bunch of fantastic records. So that's awesome. Yeah. And they were a band, um, an another big band, like, with My Chemical Romance that kind of brought me into the, the punk world. And hearing them play, like, literally everything was so nice. Like, there wasn't one song I thought, man, like, I wish they played that. <laughs> they played all the hits, and they played some, like, you know, a smattering of other, like, cool tracks yeah. from their discography. That's always cool to hear, because, like... They're a band that I haven't seen that's on my bucket list of bands to see. So to to have other people be like, yeah, like whatever yeah. Green Day comes to town, like you need to go see them. So yeah, I got to get the co-sign on that. But the next question, Maggie, another fun one. Favorite TV show, favorite movie? Ooh, okay. Um, New Girl is probably my favorite TV show. Ooh, that's a good uh, I am Jessica Day. <laughs> <laughs> I am her, like everything she does is something I would do. Um, so that's definitely my favorite comedy. I've probably watched it like eight times all the way through now. Um, favorite movie? Um, I'm kind of between two. I love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Classic. That is like probably my favorite movie of all time. And when I went to Chicago back in December with one of my best friends, we did a lot of the Ferris Bueller stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, because that was always like a bucket list thing of mine to do. Um, and so we were there for the Nothing Personal anniversary show for All Time Low. So we had another day, and David was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, let's do some Ferris Bueller things. <laughs> so <laughs> we did that. And then I love the newest Star is Born movie. Oh, awesome. There you go. Those yeah. are both great choices. I mean, I feel like I'm a little bit – bias because i do like the ferris bueller but star is born another great one um next question maggie if you were trapped on a desert island for the next month and there was one record you could bring with you what would it be i mean i'm technically on a deserted you island are. so qu quarantine <laughs> album for the next month oh man these are good questions thank you i appreciate yes. it 
I appreciate it. Like these are creative questions. I'm here for it. <laughs> um, God, that's a that's so hard. This uh, is not forever, though. That's I feel like some people are like, man, if you said forever, that'd be very hard. So I feel like a month you could do thirty days. You know, I feel like yeah, thirty year. days. Um, I mean, it could very well be. It could be try hard. The, <laughs> yeah. Because I never get tired of any of those songs. Um, and they just make you happy. And so oh, yeah. being on a deserted island, like, I will need something to take my mind off of being on a deserted <laughs> island. Um, or quarantined. <laughs> or quarantined, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say try hard. That's such a good EP. Yeah, every time Hush Hush comes on, that just... I, I, vibe. I vibe. That one's That one's so good. I think... Yeah. I think the sleeper song that my favorite personal favorite is Nearsighted. I think that one is just low key, such a great track. But yeah. if you just want a happy, fun vibe track, hush, hush, you know, Ben yeah. Camino, if you want to like come on, if you watch this, because, you know, Maggie and I have just been pumping you up. If you want to like <laughs> come on the channel, that'd be very dope. I would probably cry. Uh, so that would be very cool. So if you want to make me cry, come on. Um, but the next thing, Maggie, uh, what is one song that you would recommend to a new fan? Like, because I imagine a lot of people that are going to be watching this don't mm -hmm. know much about you. Uh, yeah. So, what would be one song of yours that you're like, "Yo, this is my song. Like, you should check this one out." Yeah, um, it would definitely be "Don't Tell Me," um, because that song is definitely one that's super special to me and close to my heart because it's about just staying true to who you are as a person and not allowing anybody to make you feel bad about who you are or tell you the kind of person that you should be, um, which is kind of my mission and my goal when I write music is mm -hmm. to make people feel good about themselves and to hopefully inspire other people to find the confidence to be themselves and to follow their dreams. Um, so that one definitely, um, and I've, I've had that song for so long, and, and when I released it in September, it felt so good. <laughs> and to hear, to hear people, I, I've had a few people um, at shows, not even just locally, but like when my band was on tour, just people come up to me and tell me that the song helped them get through a tough time or impacted them in a bigger way. That is the reason why I do this. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely don't tell me. So if you want to check out my music, check out Don't Tell Me. Let me know what you think, and I really hope it makes you feel good. That is awesome. Like I do, you know, like I said, I had checked out some of your stuff prior to this, and I I feel like Don't Tell Me, I have to give the cosign to that too. I really enjoyed that one um, as well. And I think it's just really cool, like, because I obviously haven't had any of my music out yet, which hopefully soon. Um, yeah. But I feel like when whenever I talk to bands and they're like, yeah, like I release music and people come out to me and they're like, oh, my God, this song means a lot to me. Like, I couldn't even gratify that, like, in, in a sentence, a paragraph, a monologue, whatever it may yeah. be. Like, I just feel like that's such a cool thing that, like, doesn't have like a award to it you know what i mean like if you like get yeah. a grammy or something you're like oh my god like that's an achievement like i've got album of the year i got song of the year or something like that but i think it's such an impressive thing when a band like strikes to you as a person and so you know like i do feel like that's a strong message and like what you write and stuff like that so i do want to give the props that just the way that you're writing is really i feel like it's impactful to people that are listening to your music Thank you. And, like, again, that's always been my goal because the bands that I've listened to, like, they inspired me mm -hmm. in the same way. And even in quarantine right now, music is getting me through this Yeah. Um, and has been a, a type of therapy for me, whether I'm just listening to something or something or playing something. So I try, I try and give that to people um, whenever I can and it makes me feel so good when I've impacted someone like that yeah has anybody gotten like any sort of like tattoo because I feel like that's the ultimate like you're a fan <sighs> yeah I I don't think so at this point but there have been a couple of people that have told me that that's their plan and I'm like oh my god <laughs> that's like next level so 
that that's going to be really cool. If I ever if I ever have that happen and I get a picture of it, I'm going to be like, "Oh my god, someone has their words like tattooed on them." That's yeah, that is literally nuts whenever I see that and you know, I've always had the thought of doing it, so I'll I'll have to definitely keep this sort of conversation in mind the next time it happens. But the last yeah. thing, Maggie, the most important thing that cream of the crop you know the last thing tell the people where they can find your music at where they can find you out on social media anything you got coming up in the next couple months yeah for sure so my instagram and facebook are at it's maggie schneider uh schneider is s-c-h-n-e-i-d-e-r it's hard to spell i apologize um, <laughs> um you can find me on spotify apple music uh my twitter is where i post a lot of my Covers and my at there is at it's Maggie underscore S. Um, and we have just a lot of stuff we're working on right now, a lot of big changes, uh, which I'm really excited about. I know. Um, I wish I could still, I wish I could still the tea, um, but it will be worth it. And just follow me, and you will get all the inside scoop once we are ready to announce. Um, but we're working on a lot of stuff, we got new music. We got new music videos um, and just a lot of a lot of new things. So we're super excited about uh, just everything we got going on. There we go. Well, check the links in the description where you can find out about Maggie, her music, all of that sort of jazz. It will all be below. You don't have to spell it because I'm going to go through the hassle of trying to spell it and put it in the bio so you don't have yeah. to. So. If you want to pay me the respect, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you want to, if you want to give me the salute, that would be great. But um, go check out her stuff. Really, like I had been following her covers, and then shout out to Boys of Fall. That was like the first one that I saw, and I was just like, "This girl's got it. Like this is nuts. Thank like this you. is so cool." So go check out her music. Um, her, you know, her solo record is really really good so if you want to go give it a listen go do that uh make sure to go tweet at alex at all time low because you know he's just on the goat farm not doing anything so just i mean right. other than tearing for the goats but right we look we can multitask okay i will help with the goats we can write a song like it can happen it can happen so it all starts with you and on twitter so make sure to go tweet at him when this goes live um if you want to time stamp it you can do that if you just want alex to be like yo come on brandon's show that also be very tight too so you know so if you want to look out for your boy too that'd be great um and if you enjoy this interview share it like and subscribe goes a long way and uh thanks of course to maggie for coming on yes thank you so much for having me this was so fun <laughs>